Hey there, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, August 17th, and I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. First, today, the Jaguars cut Tim Tebow. The former quarterback was trying to make the transition to tight end after being out of football since 2015. Now, Tebow was reunited in Jacksonville with his college coach at the University of Florida and former OSU coach Urban Meyer. Tebow was scrutinized heavily on social media after clips of his blocking in his only preseason game went viral. And one tennis star is using her winnings to give back. Naomi Osaka has pledged to donate her prize money from this week's Western and Southern Open to the Haitian relief effort. Osaka, whose dad is Haitian, tweeted, It really hurts to see all the devastation that's going on in Haiti, and I feel like we really can't catch a break. I'm about to play a tournament this week, and I'll give all the prize money to relief efforts for Haiti. I know our ancestors' blood is strong. We'll keep rising. And on Sunday at Cedar Point, a woman waiting to ride the top thrill dragster was hit by flying debris. This is police body cam video courtesy of the Sandusky Register from around 4 o'clock that day when an unidentified piece of metal came loose and hit a woman in the head when she was in line. The Ohio Department of Agriculture apparently inspected the ride back in May and were supposed to head back for another inspection next month. Now, one man standing in line for the Top Thrill Dragster on Sunday just happened to be an ER nurse, and he said the whole scene was just chaotic. It was traumatizing for a lot of people involved, and I can say that the people who, you know, myself and the other medical personnel who were who were there assisting, we did everything we could with what we had. He said the Cedar Point EMT crews were on site in less than a minute. Right now, there's no update on the woman's condition. And now take a look at these heartbreaking images out of Afghanistan. One U.S. military cargo plane from Kabul had reportedly 640 men, women, and children all fleeing the Taliban as they seized control of the country. Crowds of people rushed the runway as they tried to board a plane, with some even clinging to the sides as they got ready for takeoff. The State Department says 2,000 people have been evacuated with a priority on U.S. personnel and citizens, but many Afghans who have helped the U.S. are desperate for their turn. But it's an uncertain situation. People doesn't understand uh, how the Taliban will deal with them. So we are all waiting, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, it's waiting for the worst. The Taliban has set up checkpoints throughout the city, declaring they're in full control. As of right now, they're guarding the only entrance into the airport and reportedly only letting foreigners pass. And now nearly every county in Ohio is listed as having a high rate of transmission of COVID-19, and that's per new CDC guidelines. In an updated map from August 9th through the 15th, all but three of Ohio's 88 counties are high. The other three counties, Athens, Hancock, and Ashtabula, are considered substantial. According to ODH, there were 3,235 new COVID-19 infections today, which is about 1,000 more than this time last week. With the positivity rate nearing 9%, it's really possible that the state goes over 4,000 tomorrow. Wednesdays and Thursdays typically are high case days. Now today, there are also 220 new hospitalizations, bringing the highest single day reporting in Ohio since February 10th, and there's now a total of 1,575 patients in Ohio hospitals getting treated for COVID-19, the highest since February 15th. And because of this new trend, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine held a press conference today where he pleaded with school leaders and parents to make sure kids mask up when they head back to class. At the very least, consider doing it for the next few weeks. The next few weeks when we know the virus spread level will be very high, you can always go back to no mask once the virus spread is reduced. But he didn't issue any kind of mandate, and it doesn't look like he will anytime soon. He said that he believed Ohioans would make rational decisions when presented with the facts, and that most people in the state just want to make their own decisions. And as the virus surges across the country, the Biden administration is expected to advise COVID-19 booster shots for most Americans. Now, the plan is still being developed, but it's expected to recommend boosters eight months after full vaccination. And that could start as early as next month, pending FDA approval. As with most vaccines, after a time, protection wanes. And so we have to give our immune system a reminder and that's what a booster would do. The third shot would likely be the same brand as the first two if you received the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. It would also be likely given in phases with older people receiving the booster first. 
But that is all I have for you today. If you liked this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you're in the loop.